This is the DJI RSC2 and this is the Zhiyun Weeble S. Let's go test these two travel gimbals out. Hey, if you don't know me, my name's Jake, and I create content here on YouTube to help solo creators on the go. People like me who are on the go creating small commercial projects or stuff for here on YouTube. So I test and review equipment here in Alaska, and I do tips and tutorials on how to use that equipment so you can tell better stories and make smart buying decisions when you go to buy a piece of equipment. Today, we're comparing the DJI RSC2 and the Zhiyun Weeble S. Both of these are great travel gimbals. They will both stabilize your camera really well. They both have really good smart features. They both feature an app that connects to them. And if, like me, you got the Pro Package, then both of them come with a nice phone holder to be able to attach your phone to the gimbal. Both of them come with an image transmitter, which you will need if you want to use either of them for object tracking. And both of them come with a focus motor, which is great if you use manual lenses like the Sure anamorphic lenses, or if you want to use these focus motors in order to be able to zoom in and out using a zoom lens. Both of these gimbals will carry a significant amount of weight. This I've tested up to about five pounds, but it will do more. I think probably closer to maybe seven pounds, six and a half, seven pounds. This is stated by DJI as it will do up to six and a half or 6.6 .6 pounds. Both of these have excellent battery life. DJI says this will last up to about 14 hours, which I don't have any reason to doubt. And Zhiyun will last up to about 12 hours using the two 18650 batteries, which are tucked right in here. That's where there is a little bit of a difference in that this has interchangeable batteries and fairly easy to get a hold of batteries. Although the ones that Zhiyun uses are a little shorter than the standard 18650 batteries but they're fairly inexpensive to get and fairly easy to get as well. This does not have an interchangeable battery. The battery is built into the grip and you must charge it using the USB port on the side using USB-C. It takes about two and a half hours to charge from nothing to all the way full, but the fact that it doesn't have a replaceable battery or an interchangeable battery is a little bit of a downside. Both of these gimbals come with a sort of interesting combination plate. The DJI is a Manfrotto combination plate with an Arca Swiss compatible plate that slides on and off like that and comes off. This is the Arca Swiss compatible part, and then the Manfrotto compatible part is here. This is great, except for that I use Peak Design's quick release plate on all my cameras, and it is not compatible with this. Fortunately, Small Rig came up with this plate, which is compatible with the quick release plate from Peak Design. The Weeble S has a Manfrotto combination plate that they've designed that comes on and off much the same way. However, in order for me to use my quick release plate with from Peak Design, I use this Arca Swiss compatible clamp and just put it on the gimbal and bolt it in and it works fine. When it comes to weight, both of these gimbals are fairly lightweight, but this is significantly heavier than the Weevil S. This comes in at about 3.4 pounds or 1,540 grams um, when it's just like this, which is just the plate, just this plate, the tripod and the gimbal. But if you put everything, the image transmitter, the focus wheel and the plate on it, then you're talking about 1,824 grams or four pounds, which is fairly heavy. Now the Weeble S is significantly lighter when it's just like you see it here, just the plate and the tripod on it. It's 1,300 grams, which is about 2.8 pounds. But if you add the image transmitter, the focus wheel and all the wiring you need to make it all work, then this goes up to 1,660 grams or three and a half pounds, 3.6 pounds. So all the way across the board, this is about 200 grams or about a half pound lighter than this, no matter what. And over the course of a day, that does start to add up, especially if you're carrying it around a lot. Now, both of these gimbals do offer object tracking, but you do have to buy the image transmitter. You have to have the image transmitter for the object tracking to work. Both of them work really well. I've used both of them in both cases. 
Zhiyun has made a lot of firmware updates since it first came out, and the object tracking has vastly improved from the very first editions that came out. It's smooth, it's accurate, and it does a good job. The same is true with the RSC2. Object tracking works very well. I'm not surprised DJI has spent a lot of time developing their object tracking algorithms, but it works really well. With the Raven Eye, again, you have to have that in order for it to work. It's easy to implement with the RSC. You simply draw a square or tap the screen, draw a square around whatever you want to track, and it immediately starts tracking. Whereas with the Weevil S, you actually have to tap the image tracking button on the screen and then draw a square around it. But it's just one extra step, so it's negligible as far as the difference goes, in my opinion. Both gimbals have locking arms, which is fantastic, and there should never be another gimbal made without locking arms, so that when you put a load on it, when you're balancing it, you can easily just balance one axis at a time. DJI's locks, I think, are a little bit more robust than the Weevil S locks. My Weevil S is still going strong, however, because I have taken it so much over the last year and a half, it, uh, the axis lock on this, uh, finally broke, but I'm not surprised considering the amount of abuse that I've put this thing through. Another great thing about both of these gimbals is both of them from the scroll wheels and the screen that is on them, they both have a nice bright OLED screen and you can access almost all the function and all the parameters of the gimbal in order to adjust them on the fly from the screen and using the jog wheel or using the wheel on the Weebl S. However, the RSC2 has the mode button and you get three user predefined modes that you can switch between pretty quickly on the fly. The downside is you cannot switch from one directly to another. You have to cycle through them. You can't go from one to three or two to one. You have to cycle through all the way uh, from one, two, three and back around in order to get to the one you want to use. Here's the Weebl S fully spec'd out and balanced ready to go. There's a video up here if you want to know how to balance the Weebl S, but it's a fairly straightforward, simple process. It balances, it works well. As soon as you get it balanced and ready to go, it's good to go. One of my favorite features of the Weebl S has been how they implemented the handle. Now you can buy a second handle if you want to, but you can also use the bottom tripod for when you want to do low angle stuff, because then you have this nice uh, easy way to switch between high and low angle, briefcase mode, flashlight mode, whatever you want to call it. But it's really comfortable. It works really well on this gimbal and it's really quick and easy to switch between. And now here's the RSC2 fully spec'd out, balanced and ready to go. Works much the same. The one thing that is a little different is because you can slide both the camera plate left and right and the gimbal arm left and right, it's a little bit trickier to get it balanced. So my best advice for you is set the camera plate so that the camera is as close to this arm as you can and then balance using just the back gimbal arm here. But the nice thing is it balances well. It uh, definitely smooths everything out. I've used it with both image stabilization on and image stabilization off, and I really couldn't tell the difference. So that's pretty good. I mean, there was a slight difference, but not a huge difference. One thing I do like, because both of these have the focus wheel in some form or another, but I do like the way this one is designed because since it's sort of close and protected, it'll probably last a little longer than this one did. This one actually broke recently because I've abused the heck out of it. And that brings me to one thing that DJI has done really well on this and that I hope Zhiyun can implement on future firmware updates for this is that when you're going into the menu, you can actually have the focus wheel auto calibrate for your endpoints so that you can spin it not worry about hitting the hard stops of the the lens. You hit the wheel here to enter the menu, go into advanced, scroll down, focus motor endpoints, and hit endpoint calibrate. The focus motor will go back, find the endpoints of the lens on each side, kind of push against it to know that that's the end for sure on each side, and then just like that, it is calibrated and ready to go. And now anytime you do the gimbal, it will only go as far as the endpoints are set. So you don't have to worry about going too far. And DJI has also implemented a new mode specifically with the RSC2, and that's for underslung mode, which is not the same as the Weeble S, but it is pretty nice to use. You wanna hit the power button to go to put it to sleep, loosen up this lock here. set the gimbal so that it's down like that, lock it back up, and then hit the power button. The gimbal will automatically go into briefcase mode and it's ready to go for low angle carrying uh, around as you run around. And when you're ready to be done, 
you again hit the power button so that the gimbal goes to sleep unlock this swing it back up so that it's nice and tight lock this down hit the power button so that the gimbal wakes back up and it will automatically go back into upright mode. Both of these gimbals offer the mimic feature when you turn it on with your phone and you move your phone around and the gimbal mim mimics the movements. The difference between the two is that the Xiyun one wants you to start with your phone flat and then your rotation becomes this and your up and down becomes this. Uh, whereas DJI basically takes whatever gyro data it is, wherever the phone, whatever the position the phone is in at the moment, and as soon as you turn it on, it starts from there doing tilt, left, right, turn, all of that stuff. You can you also use a virtual joystick on both of these if you want to, where you can turn, pan, tilt even if you want. And then of course you can recenter. Now in order to get the best performance out of either one of these gimbals, you get it balanced as perfectly as you can. And then you want to do the auto tune function with which both of these gimbals have an auto tune function. You can either use the app or you can go in through the menu on the screens, but the auto tune function basically vibrates the camera around a little bit, vibrates the motors to test kind of where the strength needs to be and then sets it. That will give you the best performance when you go to film with your gimbal and your camera set up. One more thing to note is that the RSC2 will not charge your camera from the gimbal while it's plugged in. Whereas the Weeble S will charge your camera while it's plugged in directly to the gimbal. It won't charge your camera if it's plugged in through the image transmission system. It's only if it's plugged in directly to the gimbal. Then we come back to which one of these is the most compact. And I gotta say the Weeble S is still one of the most compact gimbals that I've ever used because as soon as you take everything off of it, you have this really small, really compact profile that you can slip into your camera bag pretty easily. The RSC2, while it is more compact and it is very powerful and you can break it down a number of different ways, depending on how you want to store it like this, for example, it is still a larger gimbal overall. No matter how you slice it, it's just a larger package. Now, this could fit in one pocket in my camera bag, but it would take up a fair amount and straight. It could fit in the front, but it is still a thicker, wider profile. But we also have to talk about price because that's a determining factor. The RSC2 at its base is $499. But if you buy the Pro package, I think right now they're running a sale at $739. Whereas the Weeble S right now is $340, which is an incredible deal if you're going to buy a gimbal that does everything this does. But if you want to get the Pro package with the image transmission module and the focus motor, then you're going to spend $599, which is still $140 less than the RSC2. If your ultimate goal is portability while having a small, compact, and lightweight form factor, the Weeble S, in my opinion, still wins between these two gimbals. But if you want, if you don't mind a slightly larger, heavier package, but you want the ability to stabilize larger, heavier setups, or you want to be able to use some of the more advanced features built in this, like panorama or vertical video. I don't know who does vertical video, but apparently some people do. Uh, then the RSC2 is probably going to be the direction you want to go. If you want to see how to balance a gimbal like the Weeble S or even the RSC2 or see what the best settings are for those and some of the better accessories, then click or tap there. I put together a small playlist that you can watch. I'll see you in one of those videos. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream Wednesday nights, 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.